Hello, everyone. I'm so excited about the recording in progress button. And it has been how many years now? What, two, Jade? It has been so many years. I don't even I don't even think you should be excited about that. I'm Jade, though. <laughs> oh, my God. And I'm well known. And thank you for remembering to introduce us. What? Professionalism high five through the Zoom of the dark screen person. No, nah, no. Nah, this is fist bump. Man. COVID's still real. That's true. That's true. And no, neither of us have COVID. Jade just didn't come today to the studio. Well, actually, it's my office because the studio was another. But anyway, you can tell the office. Wow, tester. you were gonna do you. You were gonna talk way too much, Monona. That was that was a lot. That was a lot <laughs> even for you. Okay, let me just say this one thing. I am enamored with how beautifully white my teeth are, so I'm enjoying watching myself. Talk. <laughs> they are okay, white. Now, now you're taking now you're taking my line. I mean, seriously, Monona, seriously. <gasps> but it's funnier when I say it. <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> You see me doing the dance. I'm sure. I'm going to throw my back out doing this. because I'm okay, So y'all that are listening to this on the podcast, go see Winona dance badly on screen. But we wrote books. Oh my goodness, we did. We wrote literary life guides with pop poetry. And they are. And I thought divorce was bad with other life lessons. If only I would meet a memoir in verse. And I thought being grown up was easy. Boring coffee. Um, wait, I'm missing something. Oh, and the little web series. Oh, you never do them individually. It's Widow's Web and Widow's Debt. And you can get wow, those Wow, individually? Questions. Yes, because they're my books. You know, I want to be like, I individually wrote. Wow, that's a lot. You can find out the rest I of got the 17 like books that the ladies have written at www.andithoughtladies.com. But y'all aren't here to hear about us or we're going to individually name her books. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jay. Wonderful guest. Would you like to introduce yourself? Are you talking to me? Yes, you're the wonderful oh. guest, sir. <laughs> uh, Kiali Tonali. Uh, good day. And my name is Edgar Silex, uh, Glass of Amadi. Thank you for inviting me to be here. Uh, very honored. I'm a poet. I uh, also an author, I write short stories as well. And um, just excited to be here. And, uh, you know, I uh, have a new book coming out called uh, Borrowing Directions from the Dark. Uh, and I basically uh, don't do much. I, I'm semi-retired and just, you know, hang out at home and go shopping and, I shop a lot. I love shopping, so I just go shop and shop. <laughs> okay, now I should That's exciting. That's should exciting. Do... Oh, I love how Jade's cutting me off, right? Because I should do yeah, the professional but... thing. First, of all, I just want to know what semi retired means. Oh, it just means that every now and then I get jobs and I, you know, I do them, but most of the time I'm just at home, you know, uh, taking care of myself and uh, just living life <laughs> oh that's fabulous <laughs> so I, like um, that. I noticed that you said that that you like to shop yeah <laughs> for what none of my business but I sure want to know <laughs> well I uh right now you know I, I like shopping for uh uh stereo stuff and uh or lots of old records and uh i shop for uh right now i i i bought a huge stack of uh philip k dick books i don't know if you know who he is he's a sci science fiction writer uh the blade runner that movie was based on one of his books so i have huge about you know 30 something books i bought of his you know a lot and i've been reading them and uh it's a lot of fun Oh my goodness, for a writer, that sounds like the dream life right there. Just read books <laughs> and enjoying them. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So, let me let me try to be semi-professional here. You, you write poetry and you are quite recognized for your writings. Can you tell us a bit about um, your poetry and how you got the accolades you have, I guess? And the started, how you got started. Oh, well, I, I got started really uh, very young. I started writing poetry when I was a child, really. 
my my grandmother loved poetry and uh, she would listen to poets on the radio they were uh, Mexican poets from we lived right by the border so uh, the radio would come in uh, across uh, into El Paso my hometown and there would be this program where they would have these poets come in and they would recite impromptu poems they would just they'd say right you know read make up a poem about, you know, uh, uh, you know, Coke, drinking Coke or something, and they would do it right there on the radio. And I was just fascinated by this. So I started, as soon as I could write, I started writing poetry and I've been writing ever since. I, I started to do it professionally. Um, when I, I, I used to work as a systems engineer, you know, uh, on satellite systems, you know, the that went off into uh, some of the satellites I worked on were dropped into Jupiter and uh, Venus uh, and things like that. But uh, I quit that job uh, and retrained myself uh, to be a poet. I went to graduate school and that's when I really started writing. Was, this was in my you know uh, mid mid thirties or so. I love how you said in your mid thirties, like you were old. <laughs> <laughs> It is. It 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 did seem like I was old then, because you know you don't usually go and change careers mid midway through your life. But uh, yeah, that's what I did. Wow. So you went to graduate school before you you uh, really published anything? Uh, actually, uh, I was already being published, uh, and in fact, during my first year of graduate school, my manuscript was accepted, which is just unheard of, really. But uh, so I had a manuscript except and I still had a whole year to go before I graduated. But luckily, you know, these when they publish a book, it takes about a year for it to come out. So, you know, I, I waited till I graduated uh, before they finally published it. And uh, and so, yeah, I was already published, but uh, I want I went to I went to I think believing that uh, I could hone my voice. Uh, in graduate school. So that's why I went there. I, I didn't really go to seek a career in poetry or anything. I just went to, you know, figure out how to be a good writer and a good poet. So that's why I went to, went, went there. And I guess it's one of the reasons why I don't really, I'm not into the whole showbiz part of poetry, you know, and I hide and, you know, I, I let my poems do, <laughs> do most of my work for me. <laughs> Since you let your poems do most of your work for you, did you want to write a poem about, I don't know, co drinking Coca-Cola and, and just share it with us? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that about that one, but <laughs> maybe uh, drinking a little, uh, you know, uh, tequila or something. <laughs> oh, well, so you're a party poet, are you now? <laughs> Well, welcome, welcome to the to the party poet side. I like that very much. <laughs> <laughs> so, as you got started mid career, I, well, you, you changed your career mid life. How did you did you have doubts, and if so, how did you overcome them? Uh, of course, yeah. You know, uh, luckily, I've been very fortunate, and uh, almost when I was younger, almost everything I sent out got published. So I just, I was just very lucky and people liked my work and, you know, I don't, I don't, uh, I don't promote myself or anything like that. I just let my work do the work for me. I let the poem speak and that's really, that's where I, where I am right now. That's, that's all, all anything I've ever had with poetry it's because the poems did the work for me. Uh, you know, I never, uh, you know, I, I, I don't go out and try to um, publicize myself or anything like that. I just let the poetry go out and, you know, do the work. Nice. So you got a national, you got a fellowship from the National Endowments of Arts. Yeah. How did that work out? Yeah, well, that was from that first book. Uh, I, as soon as I graduated from uh, the university with my graduate degree in poetry, uh, that same like month or two later, I received uh, the award, and uh, 
I was astonished, but yeah, it was it was wonderful. Uh, it was a great acknowledgement that I was on the right path to something. You know, it was like a way in which to say, you know, uh, keep keep doing this. You know, keep keep going on, keep doing this. And uh, you know, I I also got a another award from the National Endowment for the Humanities, which was uh, really cool too. And it was all because of you know the work doing uh doing its you know having effect uh its effect out there in the world and you know when you're when you when i write a poem um it it it's it's not me writing it it's a poem that's coming through me and so uh once it goes out into the world it's no longer my poem it takes on a life on its of its own just like you know your children do they take on their own lives and go on and do whatever they do and so whenever they receive those poems and received acknowledgement they've always come back to me and so i've benefited from them nice so you're one of the quiet poets so i should count myself lucky that we should count ourselves lucky that we even got you to come on screen and chat <laughs> I do tend to hide a lot, so people don't, it's hard for to people to find me, so that's true. <laughs> he is not lying. I went to go find him because I was like, oh, I love this poem. <laughs> I had to call a poet friend to ask if they knew the poet, and that's the only way I was able to find him. I wasn't in the note. No, I'm joking. It wasn't me at all. <laughs> so you also um, got uh, noticed by the Maryland State Art Council? Yeah. How did yeah, that come about? Uh, that was uh, actually, again, that was, you know, what's really interesting is uh, when I applied for graduate school, I sent at the same time, I had my manuscript, my uh, application for graduate school, and I submitted my manuscript to a, to a publisher on the same exact moment. I just dropped them in the mailbox. And, you know, a year later, my book got accepted and I was in graduate school. And when I graduated, uh, somehow or the other, uh, I think at that same time, I submitted some work to the uh, Maryland State Arts Council. And uh, it was like almost as soon as I got the NEA, like a few weeks later, I also got an award, uh, you know, which is was really one of the not, not nicest things because it's a one of the better awards that the NEA, uh, um, Maryland State Art Council uh, gives and I received that award and I was just you know I was shocked again it was just you know again the poets doing their work and uh, you know uh, it was it was really wonderful uh, and I've been very fortunate um, you know uh, I now I have applied for other <laughs> awards but I haven't won them so <laughs> the luck has maybe run out I don't know <laughs> what advice would you give for any person out there right now thinking about becoming a professional poet? Oh, well, uh, one of the hardest things to do is, is to be true, to be honest, you know, in poetry. A lot of people want to be poets, but their heart, it's hard to really be and be honest and, and, and to uh, be real, as, it, as, as I say, and, and just to lay out what your truth is, you know, whatever it is. I mean, I, I've i never known who I was, except that the poems helped, un, helped me understand and define me. You know, it's my work has, in a sense, defined me, not me, it. Um, I have found myself through poetry. And if others can do that, you know, uh, uh, the best thing to do is to find yourself, you know, just look for yourself in your words and in your, and if you see something that doesn't look like you, it's because it is you and you're fine, you're writing beyond yourself. So, you know, just be real, be honest, write as truthfully as you can. It doesn't matter. Poetry doesn't have to be figurative and doesn't have to have, you know, a lot of skill. It just has to be uh moving and it has to have uh passion in it uh, so that's what i would say yeah thank you i i love that I yeah love that it. was that was amazing and and how you said that that you're writing something and you don't 
think it's you, but it is you. You're writing past yourself. That's amazing. That's yeah. amazing. I, th- I think we learn that often. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's that's a, that's the best part of it because when you see it and you you see it, and you don't recognize yourself at first, you and uh, it it's it's a it's a theory of mind moment a lot of times. And when what that means is simply that it's that moment where you realize something about yourself that changes your whole idea about who you are, and you will no longer ever think differently. You know, it elevates your thinking and your consciousness and your soul and, you know, your spirit and all that stuff happens just by recognizing something that you didn't know you had in you, you know. Exactly. That's very amazing. So I do have the last question. Yep. Where can people find out more about you and follow you and buy your books? That's a hard Uh, question for him. (laughs) Well, most of my books are on Amazon, uh, but you know they um, I'm published by Northwestern University Press, uh, and they have my books. I, the new book that's coming out will be on Amazon; should be out maybe in about two or three weeks. Um, I also I also work with Indigenous uh, Nations poets. I'm a member of the board um, of Indigenous Nations poets and. Um, you can find me there if you need to find something you know look up and um you know i'm there um and that's one of the things you know if you're looking for my books don't worry about my books one of the things that's most important to me right now is being a member of this board and what indigenous nation poets is is uh have you ever read of heard of uh, cave canon have you ever heard of this organ it's a it's an organization that takes uh african-american poets and develops them, young poets, and they bring mentors and they bring them and they help them speak uh, without fear, without, you know, it's, they give them a community, uh, provide them that sort of space so that they can be who they all wanna be and say what they wanna say without any sort of, you know, the white eye, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm saying uh, uh, without the sort of judgment uh, about what you're saying and uh, indigenous nations poets is the same exact thing. We're trying to develop, uh, you know, younger poets that are coming in. And this is one of the most important things in my life right now. So, uh, you know, um, I have this uh, address on the side here. If you, you know, if you want to uh, buy one of the, my books in lieu of that, you know, go to indigenousnationskindful.com and. Uh, Five ten dollar donation would be fantastic. Uh, it helps our organization, um, and you know uh, we're we're barely on our second year. This year will be our second year, and so we're in a in a nascent stages right now of building this organization. And um, you know, Cave Canem has been around for twenty years now, or something like that. A great organization, and you know, we're hoping to to achieve something similar to that. And that's that's what's most important to me. Thank you so much for sharing that. Uh, we'll notice I'll go ahead and wrap us up. Yes, please. You can find out everything your ladies are doing at www.andithoughtladies.com. While you're there, take a moment, go to the bottom of the page and see the charities that we probably support. Maybe you can support them also. We thank you in advance for that. And just remember, y'all, wisdom is all around you. Eh. You're open to finding it and accepting it. So peace and love, you guys. From Will Nona. And Jade, bye-bye. Oh, yeah, thanks for listening.